You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie, winner of the Share Care Emmy Award for Social Storytelling and the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and today I'm answering questions. I got a question that was DM'd to me on my Insta, and the question says, basically this, does changing hand positions change how the muscles get worked? Does changing how you grip, how you hold, the angle that you pull, does that change anything else about about what's going on with the muscle that you're trying to engage. And honestly, the answer is it depends. And so we're going to go through a series of what it depends on. So for instance, we can change hand positions and we can change angles and we can work some muscles uh, differently because that is in fact the way that muscles work is they work in many times on joints that are multiplanar. And so when we work a joint that is multiplanar and it handles multiple um, planes, the sagittal, the frontal, the transverse, uh, even just biplanar, two of those, there are some muscles that are connected to hinge joints. And those will work just one way, and it doesn't matter how else you work them. um, It's only going to work in one way because it's a hinge joint. And so Doing something, for instance, in the sagittal plane on a hinge joint doesn't change anything about what's going on with any other muscle and what other plane of motion. So here's what we're going to look at. First of all, let's look at muscles like the pecs. Now, a pec position, you can go with a normal kind of barbell position where your hands are in a pronated position. And you can do a dum- a, a, a dumbbell chest press or a barbell bench press. and that's going to work kind of globally what's going on throughout the pec, like just kind of a nice broad swath of the pec. Now, it's going to focus primarily on that very center portion. I mean, you change your hands. You change your positions in more of a neutral position. You even do a supinated position. Well, it can get a little harder because you probably have to use dumbbells in order to do that. But what it does really is it just changes the angle at which you're stressing the muscle. So it does have some effect on it, but not much, to be honest. When you when you move your hand positions in that way, really what you're going to do more for your pecs is changing incline and decline because you have a fan-shaped muscle, and that fan-shaped muscle is going to work your upper pecs more when you do an incline, lower pecs more when you do a decline, and the middle pecs more Um, And kind of like globally, a good overall pec exercise when you're generally in a flat position. But hand position can matter. Let's talk about uh, a good example of hand position mattering and not mattering. And a good example of that is at the same joint. And this one I find to be really interesting. A lot of times we could do just a bicep curl, right? So if I do a bicep curl, and I go into a supinated position. That means my palms are up and I'm in a supinated position. And I do a bicep curl. That is actually going to primarily, it's going to um, preferentially allow my biceps, my biceps brachii to work more. Now, my brachialis is still working, my radio uh, brachioradialis is still working, but the biceps brachii is in a position where it is preferentially working. Now, it's not necessarily because the elbow. It is because of this radial ulnar supination. So what happens is, yes, it's a hinge joint at the elbow, but at the elbow, there's also another joint, and it is where the radius and the ulna connect. And so the ulna, it's on the pinky side, pinky ulna, pinky ulna, P-U, P-U. Pinky ulna, pinky ulna. So you're going to get the pinky on the ulna side. And then the radius is on the thumb side. Thumbs up. That's rad, bro. We're going to go back to the 90s, Michelangelo and the Ninja Turtles. All right. So thumbs up, rad, bro. So radius is on the thumb side. And what happens is that the radius will flip 
over, will rotate over the stable, the locked in ulna. And the biceps brachii attaches to that radius bone. And so by going into pronation, supination, or a neutral grip, the biceps brachii changes length, it changes position. So in a supinated position, it is in a position where it is going to fire more completely. But you start to reciprocally inhibit it when you go into a neutral position, when you do like a hammer curl. And so the biceps brachii doesn't fire as much. And so it's more focused on the brachialis and the radiobrachialis. You can go into a pronated position and do bicep curls. And again, less biceps brachii, more brachialis, more brachioradialis. These are examples of my hand position changing how a muscle fires. Well, it's not quite the same on the other side of the joint. On the other side of the joint is the triceps the triceps brachii. And the triceps, you would think maybe because my hand, I can change positions and I've heard it multiple times is, and these are usually from like old school bodybuilders. And there's not really much truth in this is that when you do like your neutral position, you get the long head, you go into a pronated position uh, or palm down, you get the, the lateral head and the supinated position, you focus more on the medial head. That's not true. Um, and the reason it's not true is because the triceps connect to the ulna, pinky ulna. It's on the pinky side. They connect to the ulna. Now, the ulna and the humerus right there, that's, that's a hinge joint. And because it's a hinge joint, when I change position in my hand, the radius moves over the ulna, but the ulna doesn't move. The ulna's not moving at all. And so if I go into pronation or supination with my hand, it doesn't actually change what's going on at the recruitment of fibers for the muscle that crosses over my elbow, the triceps. And then I get the question, the, always the follow-up question, which is, but Rick, it feels different. And I will explain why it feels different. Uh, in some ways, it feels different just because your hand's in a different position. And so you require, if you recruit muscles differently, holding a different hand position, but not your triceps necessarily. But where it actually starts to involve the triceps is because your hand position can determine shoulder position. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can probably see when I go palms down, the elbows go out to the side. If you're on a computer, your elbows usually flare out to the side. It is hard and uncomfortable to keep the elbows tucked into the side and go palm down. And as you go neutral and then you go palm up, palm up, it's really much easier to keep my, my elbows next to my side. And as I switch, my, my shoulders start to move. And the reason it feels different in your triceps when you move at the shoulder is because one of the three heads of the tricep crosses the shoulder joint. And therefore, when the shoulder changes position, it will recruit fibers differently at the triceps. Now, I don't think it's really worth it, um, aside from just like variety in your workout to, to focus on whether you're palm up neutral or palm down. None of that really matters. But where it could very much matter is how much length you get in your tricep when you do your tricep exercises. So for instance, my hands could remain neutral. It can remain palm down. You could even go palm up. But if you keep your elbows at your side doing like a cable exercise, then that will not create generally as much hypertrophy as it would if you start to take your arm and lengthen your tricep. Now, remember, we lengthen our tricep, we flex our elbow all the way, and then we go into shoulder extension. So I'm here, I'm doing it. I'm taking my arm over my head and I'm flexing my elbow so it looks like my hand is scratching the center of my back. And that's going to be a tricep stretch. Well, if I can get a tricep stretch like that and maybe do a cable extension from there, so an overhead cable extension or do a tricep extension with some kind of weight where my arms are over my head, that is going to lengthen my triceps more and I will engage. Well, I engage my triceps plenty. You might, it might even be less weight that you lift, but it is the stretch that's going to get a, a more hypertrophic response according to the research. So 
hand position, does it matter that much? Not really for the triceps, but does it matter that much for my biceps? Yeah, yeah, so it, it will, and there is an anatomical reason for that. And you can do the same thing, like um, your quads. So your quads, uh, and it's not really truly a hinge joint, and but if you look at how your knee bends and extends, you go into knee extension. Knee extension, and some people rotate their knees in to, to like a knock knee position, do knee extensions and try to work their lateral quads more. And then you flip over and externally rotate, try to work the VMO a little bit more. Um, and it, it's very, very nominal, if at all, that it works that much differently. However, a VMO, the vastus medialis obliquus, is a muscle that it's kind of like the last 10 degrees of extension. So it's not whether or not your internally, externally rotated change of position, kind of it's the range of motion, the degree at which you go through. So that last 10 degrees, the vastus medialis obliquus, the VMO, engages more. So it's not whether you turn your foot this way and turn your hips that way, but the hamstrings do. Hamstrings are different in that way. So because all of the hamstrings cross over the hip, if I turn my feet out and I do hamstring curls, then I'm going to get more of the lateral hamstring muscles, the biceps femoris. If I go medial with my foot position and my knees knock together and I do prone or I do seated hamstring curls, my medial hamstrings are going to work more. And if I go right into the middle, they will be worked relatively evenly unless you've got some real synergistic dominance going on there, which tends to skew towards the, um, the, the biceps brachii. So does it matter? Um, yes and no. It depends on what you're doing. You could do a lat pull down in the sagittal plane. You can do one in the frontal plane, and then you can start doing rows. Well, rows and lat pull downs work differently. They work more, um, there's a lot less upward and downward rotation when you're doing rows. There's a lot less, there's a lot more retraction and protraction in rows and really not that much uh, when you're doing lat pull down. So how you do an exercise can matter. So for instance, if I want to really focus on what's going on with my mid back, and we talk about like rhomboids, mid traps, and lower traps. They tend to be weaker. Well, if I want my mid traps and rhomboids, rowing is going to be highly indicated. But if I want my lower traps, then the lat pull down, ensuring depression takes place at the shoulder blades, um, then that's going to be more indicated. So, and then as I do my rows, as my hands come up higher and higher, my elbows come out to the side. And I'm in the complete horizontal plane. I've almost taken out all of my lat. And now I'm doing primarily rear delt, which is, again, highly indicated because so many people are weak in their posterior deltoids. And I can still get really good retraction. So does it matter? It matters based on what you're looking for. And it matters that you understand your functional anatomy. You understand how muscles produce and reduce and stabilize in multiple planes at various speeds and how you can do that in a safe and a coordinated fashion. That is important to who we are and what we do as personal trainers. And when you start to understand the, um, the anatomy a little bit more and the biomechanics a little bit more, you can fine tune it and you can kind of eradicate some of the thoughts that... Um, that are maybe just a, a little more bro science. And um, it doesn't mean that bro science doesn't work. It just oftentimes doesn't work the way that they think it works. Do I have a problem if somebody, you know, if somebody says this tricep exercise, palm down, neutral, palm up, it all works different heads. And I, I mean, it doesn't, but you can do that and it won't be wrong. So you know, my, my job is to uncover where the truths are and then see if I can help support you as personal trainers in your process of trying to better understand the importance of movement. 
And that's why we will go on. We will generally say there's no such thing as upper trap, uh, upper traps. There is such thing as upper traps. <laughs> there's no such thing as upper abs and lower abs. But Rick, I feel my lower abs. Well, most time people feel their lower abs, not their lower abs. It's their psoas, which is underneath the lower portion of your abs. So, and people tend to feel their lower abs when they do hanging leg raises, hanging knee raises, Reverse crunches. Why reverse crunches? Well, they're crunching, so the abs are working, but also it tends to be hip flexor heavy. Are they wrong? No, they're not wrong. You just need to know why you're doing what you're doing. You know, understand why you feel it the way that you feel it. And that, my friends, I think is very important when it comes to being a personal trainer and then understanding some of the nuances because we don't want to buy in to bro nuance. Oh, you do this, you get that, you get that. Again, like sometimes bro science gets it right, which is not science, by the way. Uh, it's anecdotal. And sometimes you just lift heavy enough, long enough, and go with your feelings, you're going to still get results. But getting results doesn't mean you got results based on truth. It's you got results based on consistency. You got results based on your determination and your grit and keep showing up. But we want to add truth to that, and that creates balance for us and our clients as we work with them. So does changing hand position work muscles differently? It does, but it depends on what you're doing. Uh, and in some cases, it doesn't because it depends on what you're doing. Um, so what I like to do is I like to answer questions by making the water super muddy and not answering questions. So anyway, I hope that the, the versions of this that I did answer, you found very helpful. If you got questions for me, you can also reach out to me. Hit me up on Instagram at dr.rickritchie, or you can email me at rick.ritchie at nasm.org. Y'all keep inspiring people to fitness. Keep it doing. Get people involved in activity. I love it. You guys are an absolute inspiration to so many people. Um, thanks for listening. Like, subscribe, share with your fitness friends and family. Thanks for listening. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast.